everyone, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. And today I wanted to show you a card that I made to match an envelope from a prior video. And I know that that's a little strange, but once I got this habit of making a card out of the remnants of a 12 by 12 piece of paper when I make an envelope, then it sort of stuck with me and it's so easy and fun to do. I made this one in a different video and the only thing I changed is I put some of this dotted washi tape down at the bottom. Remember that washi is usually fairly translucent, so even if it's white, it will take on the color of the paper to some extent. So I just took the scrapbook paper, used my white pen to add some more dots onto the dots, and then I have this nice little sentiment stamp that says, thankful for today and some jewels on here and layered it up with some white paper and I have a strip of that washi on the inside and this paper is a little bit textured so I like that about it. It's just a nice craft paper. Since I have some paper with stars on it and it's almost 4th of July I thought I'd make a card out of that and I have a nice rainbow one blue of course and then this organic looking one the thing to remember is if the paper is cheaper then that's better so you really want thin paper you can do it with any cardstock anything you want but printer paper or inexpensive paper is the way to go and I do have a couple other videos on making envelopes if you haven't used this uh, EK tools board before you might want to go back and watch one of the other ones the very first one I go through it in detail you Pop your scoring tool out of here, and if you have one that you prefer more you can use it nice bone like a Teflon bone folder or something like that and you just set it down here This is an 8 inch square piece of paper because I know that uh, I have an idea of the cards I'm gonna make if I was doing shaker cards, I'd go bigger, eight and a quarter, or maybe even eight and a half, but these will be just fine. I'm gonna score it here. And remember, on thin paper, you wanna be pretty careful about not pressing too hard. It's not like your regular um, card stock or nicer papers that you work with. These are out of one of those giant packs that you can get for $5 or less and that is great paper to use, or that one of your friends will give you for free. Lots of times, if your friends have one of those big paper pads, they bought it for certain ones, and it takes so long to use those up that they couldn't care less if you take a couple pages out of them. That's usually how I make my envelopes over the years. Okay, so I've scored it at two and three quarters, and at three and a half, and I rotated it, and again, if you haven't seen this at all before, go back and watch one of those other videos. And then I have my score lines. And one of the things that I love about making envelopes is to see how different papers will turn out. Because um, sometimes you have a piece of paper and you use it for a project and then when it comes together, it's pretty neat. For example, I like this one because the stars are at an angle a little bit, so I like how they lay out. This one will be fun because depending on how I cut the paper, I have a little bit of control about where this ends up. And you'll notice these are both fairly light background papers, and this one too. That helps. I like to use a Sharpie to address them usually. Just be sure you don't put your card in the envelope first. Okay, so address your envelope. So I'm just gonna score another one and then we'll turn them into envelopes at the same time instead of doing, do a little more systematic. If I was gonna make a whole bunch of envelopes, I would make them in more of a batch process. So I'd cut a whole bunch of eight by eight squares. Oops, sometimes when I talk, I can't remember which one I did. I would um, cut all the squares, then I would do all the scoring. Oops, see what I did on that one? I can save that though. A little too much pressure. Then I would do all of the cutting and adhesive at the same time too, just to speed up the process. Any scissors will work. These are just the first ones I grabbed. My smaller ones would probably be a little better. 
I'm gonna take these a little tiny bit wider than 90 degrees, just because then I don't have to go back and fiddle with them. You can do them at exactly 90 if it's really important to you, and then tidy them up if they don't quite work. I just come in like, eh, that's pretty good. Remember, we're supposed to be relaxing. We're not supposed to be stressing about everything. This is gonna be a really cute envelope. This would have been a good envelope for Father's Day too. Then I have those score lines. And sometimes you can just do them by hand, but if you have your score tool handy, go ahead and use it. And don't forget to score the flap that you're not going to glue down to, just so it's ready to go. Today I'm gonna test this out. I know a lot of people are big fans of score tape and various products like it. It comes in many different sizes. I got the 1 8 because based on the adhesives that I use, Something super narrow is what I'm always looking for. I have plenty of stuff that's half inch or quarter, so I got the one eighth. One of the advantages that people talk about with this and they love is that you can tear it. If you're making a bunch of envelopes or you're doing a bunch of stuff, you're not rotating back and forth from scissors or if you have to hold something down with one hand. So here you go and you just tear it right off. So we'll see what we think. I thought it would be pretty good for envelopes. Let me do this where you can see it because you can see where it's going. You can lay it down nice. And if you're using a tape runner, sometimes you get off track a little. If you're gonna use a tape runner and you're worried about gluing your envelope shut or something like that, you can always put the flaps out and just put the adhesive on them that way. So since I haven't used this, I'm sure that you get used to pulling these off. There we go. You could use any adhesive you have. Uh, art glitter glue would work. Uh, Hermafix, Hermadots, you're probably about out because they're discontinued now. Anything will work. I didn't want to mess with a wet glue because I didn't want to wait for it to dry or hold it down. This way you can just move on to the next section. I think I like this stuff. I think price-wise, let's see, how long is this? 27 yards, that seems like a lot. It was, uh, I wanna say about $5, but I think it's more than five. I got it when I went to that expo in Puyallup, and it was at different booths. I'd like to tell you that I bought it at the least expensive booth, but you know, sometimes you pick it up at a booth and then you see it later. Okay, now, when you're doing this, put your adhesive on all your flaps and then close it. But I was trying to demo and talk, and I just kind of wanted to see how that adhesive worked. Okay, now I'm going to hold this down. Now, what I did was I glued it first so it would be held in place nicely, and then I'm cutting out the little triangle. Like I've said before, I don't know if it matters if you cut out the triangle. Maybe it makes your day better. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe no one ever notices. I'm pretty sure we worry too much about the inside of envelopes. Okay, so there we go. I, of course, have tons and tons of blue washi tape, so I will put some washi tape on this. You could stamp all over it. Anything that you want to do, you could use paint, as long as they can clearly read the address. Just remember, if you're going to use a Sharpie, don't put your card in the envelope first. Okay. Then let's do one more because I'm curious to see how this one comes out. Now the area that I damaged a little bit, I'm going to be sure and use that as the part that I glue down, not the top flap. So A, it won't be noticeable and B, depending on what I decide to do with this thing and if I'm carrying it around for a while, it won't be uh, tattered and tired. Now you do not have to fold them first, it just kind of helps me see the lines better and get an idea of where I want to cut. I mean, making envelopes is one of my favorite easy fun things to do because they turn out adorable and they're pretty hard to mess up. I used to make a lot of envelopes and 
again, don't forget, uh, be sure and check the other videos. If, if you're really interested in making envelopes, be sure and check the other videos. But um, you can use printer paper and make adorable envelopes. So if you needed to make a bunch of envelopes and you had time and not a lot of money, printer paper is definitely the way to go because you can stamp all over it. You can do whatever you want. You could use your colored pencils. I mean, anything. And they turn out beautiful. And nobody's going to look at them and go, oh my gosh, you used printer paper. So when you're putting the flaps together, what I'm looking at is this comes up way higher. So really, I want to put my adhesive on here and lay it down. And then this time I'm going to do it the right way and not get sidetracked talking. So I'm going to put my adhesive on both sides first. Notice I didn't go all the way to the edge because I know I'm going to cut that off, okay? So I want to go down here a little bit. And I didn't have to go all the way down here. I mean, you don't have to get every single bit. It's not going to fall apart as long as you're using a good adhesive. I mean, think about origami. We just fold the paper nice and it stays. So the secret to this is not tons and tons of adhesive. This should be an easy, easy thing. So then I'm gonna fold it up. And then what I'll probably do is put some washi tape right here across this fold at the bottom. Nobody will ever know. Remember that washi tape and stickers and maybe an extra flower in a certain spot with a stamp, they have a reason. Okay, there we go. Cute as can be. And again, don't, don't forget to score that top line too. I got it a little crooked. There we go. So, two cute envelopes. And you got to see how this one turned out. I thought I was done with the video, but then I realized you might want to see this part. This is the 12 by 12 paper. I want this part where all the four blues come together to be on the front of the envelope. The front of the envelope is the middle of your paper. So when you're cutting your eight inch square, think about that. If you have a piece of paper, let's use this one for example. I like on this piece of paper, this lighter area over here with less contrast for the actual envelope. I would cut the piece of paper, the eight inch square out of this section right here if I wanted just that and less green. And then I might wanna use this for the card, but this would be lighter for the envelope, okay? In this scenario, I want the four blues to all show on the front. I cut a two inch section all around the outside, cut that off because it was a 12 inch piece of paper. So now it's eight by eight and I got the section that I wanted out of it. If I wanted to make a card, I still have plenty to figure out some sort of layout or I could look for a sketch or I could do a card where you use cubes of color. This would still be fine. There's no rule that says you have to cut it a certain shape to make the card afterwards. And as you noticed uh, when I made the other ones probably, I think it shows pretty well. I just marked these with a Sharpie. And I've done the same thing on here at four and a quarter and five and a half because I'm a card maker. When you buy tools, go ahead and mark them at whatever you use. You can put paint in there. You can use a sharpie you can title them if you want it's your item make it your own and mark whatever you need to because life is too short to pull out the directions all the time or be looking for those little lines that's just another hint I mean I hope you're comfortable doing that you'll see that people do that sometimes on their cutters their scoreboards whatever and if you're a scrapbooker you might mark different places than a card maker I end up with a lot of different marks because I do a lot of different things. Or if you decide that you want to make cute little cards with uh, little custom envelopes, you could color code the marks that you make. So for a small envelope, you could use red Sharpies for the two sizes for that. And for these, you could use the same color. So you could have multiple marks, but then you'd remember which one was which. I think it's easier to see on the non-pattern side. So I usually... And you'll notice that 
this is not a scientific process, okay? I didn't even sit down, I'm just chopping out the corners. I think it's good to see the way I teach it and the way I do it. <laughs> and if you go back to the early video, you can get every detail you need, I hope. I hope I put them all in there. And then you can see how I really do it. So see how cute that is? And that's what I'm talking about, about a piece of paper and then seeing the finished envelope. That is just a really fun envelope. This one would be great with a white pen. One of these big white markers would be really neat to address this with. That's it, and thanks so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.